This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. It is so good to be back after taking a break. I came back to a ton of comments on the last video of people saying, what even is this project? What is going on in this video? And I realized I need to be giving a bit of a summary of what the heck this project even is for people that are just popping in now. I'll put a card up here with a playlist of all the pick and place videos so far, but here's the short version. For the past 18 months or so, I've been working on designing and building an open source pick and place. For those of you that don't know, a pick and place is a machine that assembles circuit boards automatically for you. So it has a little suction nozzle and it picks up all the little chips and it places them really precisely on the board to then go into a reflow oven and have all the chips solder onto the board. It's super tedious putting all the components on by hand, so I wanted something that wasn't going to be super expensive to actually do this for me and assemble all the circuit boards that I want to make. Anyway, we've been making some really good progress moving kind of away from the R&D type work and more into the validation and tuning stuff. This includes setting up the whole vision pipeline for optically calibrating parts before they get placed, redoing all of the CADs so tensioning of the belts and all of the rollers onto the aluminum extrusion is way easier to handle and way stronger and more reliable, along with gathering data about the repeatability of the design and how well it's going to work over lifetime and whether or not we're going to be able to hit some of our targets for component size. But the most recent update that we've been working on is getting a new version of the motherboard Rev3 ready to rock. If you are in the Discord server, you know how hotly anticipated this board has been for a good number of months now. It is effectively doing the same thing as Revision 2, which is currently on my machine, except it kind of fixes all of my dumb, silly mistakes and does them the right way, does them the proper way. It uses parts that are going to be a little bit easier to source despite the silicon shortage and in general is just much better handled in terms of a board design. It's the first version that's truly been discussed in the community on Discord step by step as we've been going through and working on figuring out what it should be, what changes should be made. But the project has grown so much and now there's a bunch of developers who are actively working on different parts of the project and that includes this board, which I did not really design any of at all. The redesign of the motherboard has been completely led by Gonzalo. Hey Gonzalo. <laughs> Hey, Steven. How are you? <laughs> good, man. How are you? <laughs> good, good. My name is Gonzalo Pereira. My background is on uh, electronics engineering. I got my master's. So I've been passionate about uh, programming and electronics. I always like to build prototypes and small uh, gadgets. What brought me into the project was <laughs> actually seeing you're having a, a MOSFET switch. You haven't had a, a freewheeling diode, pa uh, pumps and other kinds of motors. You should have a freewheeling diet for sure so <laughs> now for the actual motherboard that you've been working on this whole time this is the butte that you have spent months designing motherboard in my view should be a, a board that's easily manufactured and reasonably cheap so the, the it isn't uh, expensive for people uh, building it on their own the most uh, board houses uh, have cheaper prices for 100 and by 100 millimeter boards that was a <laughs> A thing that I target off from the beginning. There's a lot of stuff that's changed from revision 2 to revision 3. The new USB chip allows uh, for concurrent TT, so it should uh, work better with a um, lot of cameras on the USB hub. It's also been compatible with one max linear chip, not, not only the FOE. 1.1. The switch to USB-C seemed a good thing to do because uh, more and more boards are switching to, to USB-C and phones and stuff. So people will start to not have micro, U, micro B cables. What was that like trying to pick parts for this board during a worldwide silicon shortage? Yeah, the silicon shortage, shortage uh, is a little bit harsh right now. Hard to tell if they are really expensive or they're just having uh, a higher shortage than other chips. It's hard to predict the future, the future around chips, so it's hard to pick them right now. All right, so I got the microcontroller and all the USB hub stuff all soldered on here, so I should be able to test whether or not I can upload Marlin to it over the SWD header and over DFU mode, which happens over USB. <sighs> yes! <laughs> Okay, uh, now DFU mode. Oh, it looks like it's doing it. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, yes, that's awesome. So now let's see if we can talk to Marlon for it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> cool. It talks Marlon. Oh, baby. Look at that beautiful port. And there's Marlon right there. 
All right, now I can go and solder everything else. So what's going on with these three aux ports that we have uh, down here on the bottom? The aux ports uh, allow some expandability. It includes all digital interfaces that the microcontroller has. So it includes the SPI, I2C or 2WI and two analog pins for each uh, of the aux headers and then two digital uh, general purpose IOs. Beautiful. All kinds, like whatever extra peripherals you could find on that chip, you just jammed into these aux ports. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it should be pretty expandable, I think. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, for the ABC, for the vacuum sensor, uh, we had um, previously connected to, to the ABC pins directly, but uh, Marlin doesn't handle analog reads very well, so there's some timing constraints on the software side of things. So in order to increase the frequency which we can probe the vacuum sensor, uh, we uh, picked a dedicated A to C chip so we can handle it. Okay. All right, ready. thank you so much, Consola. I super appreciate you taking the time to talk about this beautiful board that you designed. Oh, don't worry. It was really nice to build it. <laughs> Bye. See you, man. <laughs>thing. I have just finished soldering all the other components onto the board aside from the second vacuum sensor. I know that the chip is spun up well because I was able to program it and Marlin boots from it which is awesome. Now the last thing to do is to mount it on the pick in place and see if it works. It was so fun talking with Gonzalo about the process he went through to design this board and his experience dealing with the silicon shortage and a whole bunch of other things. Thank you so much Gonzalo for all the work that you put into this. It's a beautiful board. All right let's mount it up. like a charm. Once I got all the Marlin config stuff set up, it was moving just like Rev2 did, except it takes up much smaller form factor. It's electrically designed way better. Four layers instead of two, better power distribution, reverse polarity protection. There's a whole bunch of extra things that have been added in now. Granted, there are still a few more things we have to figure out software-wise to get all the hardware to work. Communicating with the ADC is something we're still working on, and RS-45, there is a solution, and we have gotten RS-45 to talk through this board, but we're just trying to figure out the best way to log it and write it and merge it back into Marlin, so those things are coming along great. But yeah, it works super well. It works super well. So if you're watching this and thinking, I want to get one of these boards for my index build, this is still a beta. This is the first beta we got of the Rev3 design. It does work, but I had to do a couple weird things to it to get it to work the right way. We found a couple bugs along the way. They're all pretty small, but they're things we're working on fixing before we actually release it and merge it into the master branch. If you'd like to dive in and play with this beta, including the bugs that it has, there's a page in the wiki that explains all of them. And you can also just check the source, check the KiCad in the GitHub and see what the problems are yourself and then work around them and play with it if you'd like. But if you want something that we vetted all completely works and we fixed all the bugs, we're gonna have a release on to master coming up pretty soon uh, where we fix all these bugs and, and get it all merged in. But they're all pretty small, like the pinout for the limit switches is flipped around. A couple of the pins for the RS-45 line we're switching up, a few random little things. Oh, it's so cool. It's such a pretty board. I'm actually working on soldering up three more of the motherboards right now for a whole bunch of indexes that I'm making to actually fabricate more of the motherboards, which is likely what I'll be talking about in the next video. Anyway, that's it for this one. There's resources about the GitHub and the wiki for this project all in the description if you're curious and you wanna poke around with the source, try a beta, wait for the full release, whatever you want. There's a bunch of links in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Rev3, baby, Rev3.
But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay manufactured the Motherboard Rev 3 beta boards that I got in, and as always, they are absolutely beautiful. We did a couple cheeky things with this board, like we put a little goblin uh, solder mask design in here, and it has some really small features, and they came out really, really sharp. Thank you to community member Winthorn for designing the little goblin. And from the time that I ordered them to the time that I actually had them here was a week and change, given that this is a more complicated board. But you can get green boards with the hassle coating from them, and they're here in a week. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Alright, here we go. <laughs>